And listen, there's no one that thinks the real estate market is in a bigger bubble than I do. Hey, what's going on, guys? Daniel here. We have, again, our very good friend, Mr. George Gammon. And today, we're going to talk about the housing market. So, George, I'm going to get right into it, as many people want to know. So, there's been a lot of videos that's come out about the housing market. You're seeing everybody from, you know, hey, I've been in real estate for 25 years, all the way to, hey, I'm 19 years old. I'm a realtor. I've never done a deal. But for some reason, I feel like I have the need to put a video out on the housing market. Um, I don't know. But, you know, you're a real estate guy. I'm a real estate guy. Obviously, you know, I run my own uh, private equity real estate firm. We have a lot of doors. And, you know, I've done a lot of research on what you've done. And you've been at this game for decades. You're you're a very experienced voice. You've you've been through it all. You've got some battle scars in the real estate game. Share with us, where do you stand? You know, or do you think there's going to be a giant crash coming? Do you think that, you know, are are you more along the lines of other YouTubers where they think that it's not going to be more so of a crash? It's going to be sustainable for for a very long time. Where where do you stand on the housing market potential crash? Well, yeah. I look at everything from a standpoint of macroeconomics. So usually when I have a, a take on the housing market, there, there's, it's a, it's a bit different than your, let's say, typical YouTuber who's talking about the real estate market because that's their, their specialty is real estate, but they might not understand the, you know, macroeconomic history and how that pertains to, uh, to prices. So the first thing that you have to ask yourself when you talk about the real estate market crashing, quote unquote is are you talking about crashing in real terms or nominal terms? Because prices can go down in real terms while at the same time go up in nominal terms. Most people just consider prices going up or down. They just look at the nominal. They don't adjust for inflation. But the reason it's so important to adjust for inflation is if you look at a chart going back to 1900, you see when you adjust for inflation, the size of the home, you see that prices didn't change for a hundred years. They were the same in the United. Everyone thinks that prices go up over time. No, they don't. Housing prices don't go up. They inflate, meaning they, they don't appreciate. They just go up with the rate of inflation, which makes a lot of sense because usually inflation goes up with wages or wages go up with inflation. There's a little bit of a lag there. And usually interest rates are are relatively constant. You know, they fluctuate a little bit here, but uh, they generally hover mortgage rates hover around, let's call it six, seven, eight percent, something like that historically. So if you've got a, a, a pretty consistent mortgage rate and if you've got incomes going up with the rate of inflation and income is part of the equation for the mortgage payment, then it would make sense that housing prices stay pretty consistent as long as lending standards stay consistent as well, which we saw through that 100-year span where you had to have 20% down payment, you had to have a, a good credit score and all those things that are now just kind of antiquated, to say the least. So, then what you saw in the beginning 2000s, when you're looking at that chart, even adjusted for inflation, is you see just this parabolic kind of hockey stick, which you would imagine, that peaks out in 2006 and then comes down, 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 down until it bottoms out in 2012. Now, where do you think it bottomed out in 2012? Kind of a rhetorical question. Of course, it bottomed out right on its historic trend line going all the way back to 1900. And why? It makes sense because it just adjusts down, back down to the level of incomes and to where we don't have all the froth with the excess debt that was issued uh, because of the loose lending standards and because of the artificially low interest rates from the Fed, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you, you, you've only got two options there. For the people who believe that the housing market is just going to continue to go up and never, ever, ever come back down, they must also believe that incomes are going to do the same and interest rates are going to do the same. Now, I, interest rates are cyclical. If you look back throughout history, American history, you see that from every 20 to 40 years, those interest rate cycles change. The interest rates go up 
for let's say 30 years, then they go down for 30 or 40 years. We are on the long end of an interest rate cycle where they have gone down since 1981. Uh, you know, Volcker raised rates up to Fed funds up almost to 20%. And since then, they've gone all the way down to, to zero where they are now. So in order to have the same type of, uh, I don't want to say data, but the same type of price action that you have seen in real estate over the past, let's say 20, 30 years, you would also need to have the same action in interest rates. Now you may believe that interest rates are going from zero fed funds down to negative four, negative 5%. I don't know. I think that's a question of, of probabilities. It's definitely not a certainty. And then what you would need either, or you need the income levels to increase significantly. Well, income levels are not increasing significantly other than through transfer payments. Now it is true that incomes have gone up from 2019 to 2020, while unemployment levels have gone up because of the additional stimulus and the additional unemployment checks and whatnot. But that's, now whether that filters into the real estate market, I definitely think it has, but will it continue? I don't know, it depends on if the, the stimulus continues and when, you know what direction that goes. So at the end of the day, uh, the long-term, you know, if you're looking at the next six months, the next year, Listen, you just really can't tell these things. But if you look at the next 10, 15, 20 years, at some point in time, we will have to revert back to that historic trend line because it's just based on incomes and just based on interest rates and whatnot. So, but the question becomes, do you go back to that trend line in nominal terms, meaning prices just the prices people see their houses listed for on Zillow or whatever or on the MLS. Do those go down by 50% over the next six years? Or do they continue to go up by, let's say, 3% per year, while inflation goes up to 8% per year? So there's a 5% delta. And if you com if, if you compound that 5% delta, let's say over 10 or 15 years, even though prices nominally have gone up 3% per year, prices will have gone down by 50% in real terms. And then they would have gone down to that historic trend line. So that's the real question. And then another thing that people have to understand that always talk about a real estate crash and a crash. And, and listen, there's no one that thinks the real estate market is in a bigger bubble than I do. But the reality of real estate is that it doesn't crash like the stock market. In other words, it's not going to go down by 30% in one day. We're not going to have a real estate black Monday. Uh, it, it goes down, yes, by 50, 60%. But it takes time because, there, the, you know, my buddy Jason Hartman always has a great analogy. He says the, uh, the sellers are always looking in the rearview mirror and the buyers yeah. are always looking straight ahead through the windshield, right? They're looking at the, what the future prices are going to be, where the sellers are looking at that, those past prices, wanting to get those. And it takes a long time for those sellers to readjust their thinking or the buyer. That takes, it's, it's difficult. And that's why... We saw the market peak in 2006 and it didn't bottom out for six years. Yeah. And that was in the biggest housing bubble we've ever seen. So it, it, it's like a Titanic, you know, it, it, it doesn't really, it's not like a speedboat. It takes a long time to adjust. So I think the, the more likely scenario is over the next 15 or 20 years, we come back down to that historic trend line in real terms. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, it's, it's going to be tough in nominal terms because of the shortage of supply and because prices for uh, construction have just gone through the roof. I, in fact, I had this conversation with Ken and Jason this weekend where um, back in 2013, I built a custom home from scratch and the construction costs went just for the building, not, not the land or the permits or anything like that, but the construction costs were about $130 per square foot. And this was on a custom home, 2013 Portland, Oregon. Now, Ken, who builds uh, apartment complexes, all mostly in Arizona and Texas, 
uh, he's building, you know, thousand unit uh, apartment complexes from scratch, new build. He's building it 220 a square foot for apartment grade, 220 a square foot. And this is, uh, I mean, it's not that much time. I mean, I guess we're, uh, what, we're seven, you know, call it seven years from, from when I did it. I mean, that is a huge amount of price inflation in construction costs. So th that's another dynamic that you've got to throw into the mix and say, okay, well, what would need to happen in order for there to be new supply come onto the market, especially for quote unquote starter homes? Right. Well, the only way for that to happen is if prices go up because the prices of construction and building new starter homes has gone up so significantly that the builders aren't going to be able to make a profit by building homes that are under 300 grand. That's why the only new housing stock that's coming to market are McMansions or at least homes that are, you know, four or 500 grand, because that's the only place where these builders can make a profit. So then you say, well, how the hell do we get supply in homes under 400 grand, just using it as a ballpark. I know each region is different one not, but uh, how do you get more starter homes? The, the question is you don't, you, you, you just don't. So as long as the population is expanding, I don't know how the hell the prices go down. So, but we do know that at some point the incomes just are not going to support prices. They're just not. And so that's why I think it's the, the probabilities would suggest to me that it's more likely that they come back down to their historic trend line in real terms, not in nominal terms. And that's kind of the angle, the way I see it. And I don't think a lot of YouTubers um, see through, see things through that lens. Yeah. And then that, that's probably one of my biggest frustrations as well is it's tough to judge the housing market and the real estate market just looking at the housing market and real estate, you kind of have to know macroeconomics and, you know, I'm a macro geek, which is why, you know, we follow you and, you know, we watch your videos. Uh, but help me understand because you said you, you pointed on something that's very important. You know, you said that a lot of YouTubers don't study macroeconomics, which I agree, but it seems that the people watching these videos, it means double for them. You know, because they're the ones in, in you know in inputting the information. They're the ones you know digesting the information. So, in your opinion, because I do think that it's very important to study what the Fed is doing. You know, monetary policy, fiscal policy, a lot of the things that you mentioned. Studying the overall circle of economics. You know, what is a good place to start for somebody watching this video right now and saying, you know what, I want to learn and I want to see the real estate market and the housing market the way that Daniel sees it, the way George sees it. And I want to look at the, the big picture. In your opinion, what's a, what's a great place to start? Well, I just start with uh, podcasts and, and specific YouTube channels. And uh, I just, I all just plug my buddies because I think they're the, the, the smartest guys in, in the space. And that's Ken McElroy, uh, Jason Hartman, and uh, and the real estate guys. I don't I don't know if you've heard that podcast, but you know, um, a lot of these, well, all these guys lived through the crash, and that that's very powerful to have that experience, and it teaches you kind of the the how how powerful these cycles can be from the standpoint of it didn't matter how good of a real estate investor or how awesome your location was or how great the school district was or what the, the, the plan for gentrification in the, the local neighborhood was back in 2008. That didn't matter <laughs> because we, you had such a macroeconomic event that all because the whole tide went down, so did all the boats in the harbor, regardless of how great your boat was. So I think that's why people have to pay attention to macro, especially today, because my goodness, what a macro environment we live in. And the guys that, that really get real estate, but also are, are very cognizant of, of macro are Jason Hartman, Ken McElroy, and the guys on the, uh, on the real estate guys podcast.
Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm a big fan of, of, you know, every guy that you mentioned, especially Ken, you know, cause uh, I, I learned through Ken through his book, the ABCs of real estate uh, and through the, the rich dad network. And that's kind of how I, I got to know him and he's a great author, a great YouTube channel. I you know, highly recommend people subscribe to him. Uh, but last question, you know, you said it's very tough to judge six to 12 months in advance, what's going to happen. And, you know, and I absolutely agree. But what are some things that investors, especially people who invest in real estate, because you have a lot of investors, I have investors, what are some things that people need to be weary of? What are the signs, the signals that people need to be looking out for? Because I do think, I do think that, like you said, in the real estate market, it happens a lot slower and, and clues yeah, yeah. and signals are left behind for people to see. What are the signals, the clues, and what are the things that we need to be weary of? So I'm going to kind of ask you the both sides of the spectrum. Well, unfortunately, we've gone from having to answer economic questions to answering political questions and political questions are far more difficult to answer and use game theory because these politicians are, 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 are crazies uh, to, to say the least they're driven by their own self-interest. Um, and a lot of it, you know, how much longer are they going to keep this mortgage moratorium? How long, much longer are they going to have rent forbearance? Uh, or maybe I got those in reverse. Yeah, mortgage <laughs> maybe, forbearance. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. Moratorium, yeah. Yeah. How much stimulus are they going to do? Are, are we going to see universal basic income? What type of regulations are they going to have due to, let's say, in the name of climate change that may restrict building? Uh, building zones, uh, you know, it's, it's back even, uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you, you really could, could answer the economic questions and have a pretty I good idea of the landscape, but now things are so centrally controlled and our entire economy is being built around stimulus and government spending. So you have to kind of think through what you believe the future, the next year, let's say, is going to look like from a standpoint of government intervention and then determine probabilities based on that. And again, that, that's, that's, that's not easy to do, but that's what we're left with. Yeah. No, absolutely. So anyways, thank you, George, for being on the show. Uh, a lot of really good insight. Uh, thanks for being on our channel. And and real quick, just uh, your YouTube channel is, your, is just your name, George Gammon, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Just, yeah. George, typical spelling, then Gammon, G-A-M-M-O-N. Awesome. And I know you got a, a great event coming up in June 11th to 13th uh, with Robert and Ken, a couple of the guys that you mentioned. Um, what is the website for for that event? Where can people get more information on that? It's Rebel Capitalist Live. They can go there, and it's it's actually live, live. It's not yeah. through Zoom or anything. It's a uh, it's a proper uh, investment conference. We're going to talk about real estate, uh, but also uh, macroeconomics, uh, gold, Bitcoin, stocks, bonds, foreign uh, assets, foreign real estate, foreign stocks, and we're going to get have some great insights. But also, what's extremely important is we're going to be talking about freedom. And we're going to be talking about how people can increase their liberty as well. And so it's going to be a great time. It's at rebelcapitalslive.com. Right on. And I'll go ahead and link your channel and also the event in the description. So guys, if you didn't catch that, don't, 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 don't have to rewind it or anything, or maybe you should, cause it increases our watch time. Uh, but I'm going to put that in the link in the description below for you guys to enjoy. George, thank you again, sir, for being on. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Uh, thank you for having me.